This is part two in a four-part series on the new services modeling tools in Rational Software Architect version 754. In this segment, I will build a simple business process model using the new business process modeling tools. Then I will derive some candidate services from it using the new services modeling tools. First, we will create a model project that initially contains a blank services model. We'll accept the default settings that will create a model in our new project using a standard template. We select the template that will create a blank services model. We'll accept the default model name. In this demonstration, we play the role of an IT architect or IT analyst. Typically, we would start with a business process model which would have been created by a business analyst. In this case, however, we will first create one ourselves so that we can see and use the BPMN editor. We elect to create a blank collaboration model. We'll change the name to something more meaningful to us. We'll start by adding a pool to represent the business process as a whole. We'll name it Purchasing. Next, we'll add a lane and name it Scheduling. A lane represents a part of the business process that could be done by a separate entity, a person or machine. You can think of a lane as a role someone plays in the business process. We'll add a start event to represent the starting point of the business process. Next, we'll create a couple of tasks. A task represents an individual step that is to be performed. To do this, we will drag an outgoing connection handle and drop it near where we want to place the new task. We create sequence flows, which represent the order in which the tasks are to be performed. We will add an end event to indicate the ending point of the business process. Now we'll tidy things up a bit. Hopefully you get the idea. To save time, imagine that we have finished the business process model. This is the completed business process model. This one is very simple. Real-world business processes are usually much more complex. Note that there are three lanes, invoicing, shipping, and scheduling. The diamond shapes are parallel gateways, indicating the start or end of parallel execution. This gateway has multiple outgoing flows, which can all be performed in parallel. A task without multiple outgoing flows is another way to indicate the start of par parallel execution. This gateway has multiple incoming flows. The execution of all incoming flows must reach the gateway before its outgoing flows can continue. We are now finished with our business process model. Now we can begin services modeling. We start by identifying parts of the business process that could potentially be automated and implemented as services. Think of them as candidate services. In SOA ML, they are called capabilities. Note the service palette drawer, which is available because this is a services model, that is, one that has the SOA ML profile applied to it. First, we'll create a capabilities package and open its main diagram.
Before we create any capabilities, let's explore the service drawer. This stack contains items for creating capabilities. This stack contains items for creating service interfaces. This stack contains items for creating participants. This stack contains items for creating ports. This stack contains items for providing for adding provided and required interfaces. This item creates a part. This item creates a service channel. This stack contains items for creating objects for creating data objects to represent the information being passed between services. This item creates a services architecture. This item creates a service contract. We'll create our first capability based on one of the lanes in our business process model. In this dialog, we'll select the business process model element we're interested in, the invoicing lane, and what kinds of traceability links we want to have created for us. By default, the capability's name is the same as that of the lane we selected, and it has an operation for each task contained in the lane. This is just a starting point. We can and will make changes. The capability also has a URL link back to the lane, so we have a record of what business process model element it was derived from. Whenever we like, we can find this element via the capability's context menu. And here it is. The capabilities operations aren't quite what we want. We'll delete one that we don't need, and we'll modify the names of the other two to better match our IT naming standards. Now, imagine that we've also created capabilities derived from the other two lanes in the business process model. We need one more capability to represent the business process as a whole, so this time we'll select the purchasing process itself. We don't need any of the methods that were created by default, so we'll delete them and then add the one we do need. We'll draw usage relationships to indicate that the purchase, purchasing capability depends on the other three to get its work done. We're finished creating our capabilities, candidate services. Normally, we would have identified many more candidate services than this and would need to use various criteria to pr prioritize which to take forward to design, realize, and implement. In this simple case, we'll take them all forward. That's it for part two. Thanks for watching. Watch parts three and four for the rest of the demonstration. Next is part three service interfaces, and service contracts.